One of the marquee new features in Logic Pro 11 has got to be the session players. So if you're familiar with Drummer, Drummer has been around since Logic 10 for over a decade. And in Logic Pro 11, it received some bandmates in a bass player and a keyboard player. So if you are familiar with the Drummer concept, just think about that, except now it can be drums, bass, or keyboard player. So you have your session player track, which also includes a session player region when you add it to the project. And then you also will add the session player editor, formerly the drummer editor, where depending on whether you have a keyboard, bass, or drummer, you'll have appropriate parameters to adjust what the instrument is playing. In addition to that, and related to that, is the chord track. And that's how you put in the chord progressions that the bass player and keyboard player will follow. And that's what we're gonna talk about in today's tutorial. But as always, when there's a new version of Logic and brand new features like this, there's also gonna be new Logic Keyboard Ninja Key commands. And if you wanna be notified when those are available, for you to download and update so that you can take advantage of some of these new features with key commands that are already mapped to do that, then please join the Logic Band mailing list. You can visit logic.band and right there on the homepage is a sign up form and that will allow me to notify you when there is a new Logic Keyboard Ninja Key commands, but it will also get you a free getting started with Logic course and some bonus tutorials that are usually only found in the members area. If you're watching this on YouTube and you wanna support Logic Band, you wanna get some bonus content and you wanna be able to attend a Q&A where you can talk to me and ask me your questions, then consider joining the band, sign up to be a YouTube channel member, hit the join button here on YouTube, or visit logic.band slash member. Link to that will be in the description as well. All right, so I got a project here and I've been messing around with the session player. I've been using the keyboard player to check out what they can do and to come to grips with the chord track. And the chord track is going to be the main feature of this tutorial. But some basics that we got to cover, like I said, there is your session player track. So if you hit command option U, that will add a new session player track to the project. If you've been using drummer prior, that was used to be the key command to add a drummer track to the project, but now it adds a session player track to the project. And when you press command option U, it's going to prompt you to select either a drummer, bass, or piano player track, and it will add the appropriate track and region to the project. So much like the drummer track used to do, you will get a eight bar region, a region from bar one to bar nine, with the appropriate instrument already selected on the track for you, uh, whether that be piano player, bass, or the drums. Now, in my particular case here, I didn't want to start the piano at bar one. I wanted to start it at bar nine. So I moved that region over to bar nine, and that's where my piano player comes in in this particular project. So if I do control end and control home, you'll see that I have uh, regions on this track, control end, 37 bars, one beat, one tick. and control home. Nine bars, one beat, one tick. So you see it ends at bar 37, starts at bar nine. And there's a couple different regions on here as I uh, can move through with the right arrow, if you can right arrow twice. 17 bars, one beat, one tick. That's where the first region ends at bar 17. Nine bars, one beat, one tick. First region starts at bar nine. That's control home. If I right arrow, you'll see that the second region starts. 17 bars, one beat, one tick. At bar 17 and ends. 21 bars, one beat, one tick. At bar 21. So you see I have a, a couple of different regions on this track. Now, the next place I want to start putting in some chords on the chord track is going to be at bar 53 because what I'll probably end up doing is copying some of these regions over to the other parts of the song where they repeat. So this is basically from verse one, pre-chorus one, chorus one, and then I, I can copy these regions to verse two, pre-chorus two, and chorus two. So I'm not worried about those right now. I'm going to go to bar 53 where I want to bring some uh, pianos in for the bridge part of this song. The other thing to talk about is how to put these regions in. So once again, there used to be a key command to add a drummer region at the playhead. It's now add session region. But the problem with that key command is whenever you press it, it brings a drummer region into the project. And 
let's say right now I have a keyboard player track and not a drummer track. So I'll get a drummer region. And so it won't follow the chord progression because the drummer region doesn't follow the chord track. So what I would have to do is go into the session player editor and switch that over to be a keyboard player. And that means I got to come out of the chord track or the tracks header and go over to the session editor and do that and then go back to the chord track. So I don't like to use that key command for right now. My workaround is to just copy one of the regions in the project already and then paste them. And then that way, when I start putting in chords, it will automatically follow the chord tracks. So that's usually what I do so far with the keyboard player and the bass player whenever I want to, you know, let's say at bar 17, when I wanted to start doing that section of the song, I just copy the um, session player region that went from nine to 17 pasted it at 17. I split it at 21 because the pre-chorus only went from 17 to 21. And I started adding the chords in those two sections. And now what we're going to do is go ahead and take a look at the chord track and leaving scroll here, entering tracks group tracks group. The chord track is going to be in the tracks group, but it's the track timeline ruler group is where you'll see the chord track. So let's see where we are here. VO left to right tracks toolbar tracks group. Okay, so tracks group. Let's interact with this. In tracks group. Four items. Tracks legend group. So we have tracks legend. Tracks time ruler timeline. Tracks time ruler timeline. Tracks header group. Tracks header. Tracks contents group. And track contents. Now, if you've been using Logic for any amount of time, you're probably most familiar with tracks header. Tracks header group. Tracks time ruler timeline. But prior to the, the chord track becoming accessible and being available to us, there was really no reason for us to ever go into the other two of these groups in here, the tracks legend and tracks uh, ruler uh, group. But now there is. So let's go in here in tracks time ruler, selected button. And when the chord tracks visible, it puts me all the way at the end. So I have to VO left actually. Chord track contains chords and chord groups that session players can follow layout area. And you see that there's a chord tracks right there, right now. Here's the thing. If you don't see this chord tracks, it's because your global tracks are off. You can press the letter G to show or hide your global tracks. But if I stop interacting with the timeline group, out of tracks, time ruler, timeline, and VO left, tracks legend group, go over to tracks legend, interact with this, in tracks legend group, fifteen items, add tracks three space option command N button, left VO right, duplicate track three space clear slash recall solo show slash hide global tracks three space G check checkbox show slash hide global tracks. So you can uh, VO space on this to show or hide the global tracks. And as you heard it say there also the key command for that is G. So those are the two ways you can make your global tracks visible. If I stop interacting with this, Auto tracks legend group. let's go back over to the tracks, time ruler, timeline, the timeline ruler here, interact in tracks, time ruler, timeline, seven items, selected button. And if I VO left, because remember it puts me at the end here, the chord track contains chords and chord groups that session players can follow layout area. All right, let's interact with this in chord track. Con and the first thing you're going to see here, Chords E music flat sign, E music flat sign, A music flat sign match seven, A music flat sign at nine, A music flat sign match seven, A music flat sign at nine, E music flat sign, E music flat sign, A music flat sign match seven, A music flat sign at nine, A music flat sign match seven, A music flat sign at nine, layout item. See, it's just rolling off a whole bunch of chords there. And that's because by default, the chords are going to be grouped. So whenever you add a session player region to the project, or whenever you add a session player, blah, blah, Whenever you add a session player track to the project and it comes up with a session player region and they're already a chord progression on it, they're going to be grouped like this. So the chord progressions can be grouped together. And it's nice because you can copy and select an entire group of chords and paste them somewhere else in the project. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. So you'd have to ungroup these if you wanted to edit them. And I'll show you how you can do that as we move through here. But you see I have several groups because like I said, I have a region that goes from nine to 17, 17 to 21, et cetera, et cetera. And each of those are grouped already. So if I be all right. Chords E music flat sign, B music flat sign slash D, CM, A music flat sign. And I'll just stop that from talking. The other cool thing is when you have these groups or chords in focus with VO left and right, if you do control home 17 bars, one beat, one tick. and control N, bars, one beat, one tick. it will tell you where each of these groups uh, start and stop. Same deal, VO right. Chords E music flat sign. Twenty five bars one beat one tick. And that's Control N and Control Home. Twenty one bars one beat one tick. So that one ends at twenty five, starts at twenty one. So I'm just gonna just hit VO N to jump to the end of this chord track. Chords E music flat sign. Chords E music flat sign. That's the last group I have on this track here that is reading. Chords E music flat sign. E music flat sign. So I'm gonna stop that from talking again. 
22 bars, 21 bars, one beat, one tick. So I'm going to move the playhead out to bar 53. I'm just going to hold down. 22 bars. Period. 38 bars, one, 39 bars, 41 bars, one beat, one tick. Period. 49 bars, one beat, one tick. Oh, there we 50, go. 51 bars, one, 52 bars, one beat, one tick. 53 bars, one beat, one tick. All right, so my playhead is at bar 53, and this is the next section of the song that I want to add something to. But I forgot that I don't have a region here at bar 53, so I'm actually just going to hit the right arrow or left arrow and find that first region on the track. 21 bars, one, 17 bars, one beat, one tick. 9 bars, one beat, one tick. 17 bars, one beat, 9 bars, there one beat. Go. Got that first region selected. I'm going to copy that copy. region and I'm just going to hit the slash key. Go to position, window. Library, return. Tracks, group, unicorn. That puts me back at 53, so command B to paste. paste. All right, so now I should have a region at 53. So control home. 53 bars, one beat, one tick. Control N. 61 bars, one beat, one tick. 53 bars, one beat. All right, so we got a region there. And now. Group tracks, group. I'm going to need to go back to the end of that chord tracks and interact with the tracks group. In tracks group. Four items. Tracks time ruler. Timeline. Interact with timeline. In tracks time ruler. Timeline. Seven items. Select chord track. Contains chords and in chord track. Interact with the chord track and just hit VON. Chord Z music flat song. Put me at the end the of the flat. chord track. And play head. 54 bar, 53 bars, one beat, one tick. Play head still at 53, right? So now I set up key commands to go ahead and, and uh, create chord, edit chords, uh, group chords, on group chords and a few different key commands for selecting chords and selecting chord groups. And I will list those out um, as well, either in the description or in the blog post related to this tutorial. Uh, so these are the key commands I've come up with so far. I don't know if these are gonna stick. So if you're watching this tutorial in the future, just look in the description, because if I end up updating these or changing these, uh, in the Logic Keyboard Ninja key commands, you'll want to look to see what the new key commands are and pay attention to those over what I might say in this particular tutorial. So don't forget to check the description if you're watching this at some point in the future. All right. So right now I have it set up that the number one is going to create a new chord and shift one is going to edit an existing chord. And I basically just took out all the screen set key commands because that was what was using numbers one through zero since screen sets doesn't really have any valid use for us as blind or visually impaired users. And I figured the number row is a quick way to just map some stuff and test this out without having to risk trying to find free key commands or uh, taking some time to hack up the key commands list to get different key commands in there. And it's nice to have all of these um, mapped out because it is a much, much, much faster way of working than always having to right click and do stuff. So if we press the number one, that is going to add a new chord at bar 53. So I'm going to go ahead and press one. E music in scroll area, nine items, chord. And the chord I want here is E flat. And by default, it's already doing E flat for me. E music flat sign, content selected, chord, edit text. E music flat sign, root note, button. Now here you can pick the root note. So it's already set to E flat. Chord types, grid. Chord types are where you're gonna choose your major, minor, suspended, second, suspended, fourth, augmented, diminish, uh, five, if you just wanna do a power chord, things of that nature. Extensions, grid. Extensions is where you do your chord extensions. That's gonna be, if you want to put a seventh in a major seventh, a ninth, a thirteen, for eleven, or flat five, a six, you know, any of those additional notes that wouldn't normally be in a triad that extends the chord, um, you'll find those in that group. None. Bass note button. This is if you want a different bass note. So like let's take the C major chord, for example. That's gonna be C, E, and G. And that's gonna have a C as a bass note, E as a second note, G as a third note. And this is gonna be the notes you'd play in order of lowest pitch to highest pitch on the keyboard. But let's say you want to do a C major chord, but you want the E to be the lowest note. You want the E to be the bass note and the C to be the second note and the G to be the third note. Well, that would be a first inversion. And that's where you would select, you know, if you set this to be like a C major chord, this bass note drop down menu is where you select E and then that will tell the system that you want to use E as your bass note in this chord. Auto, major, Ionian, scale, button. This tries to figure out the scale for the chord that you're using. You can view space on this and choose scales or modes from this pop-up menu, and it's going to be based on the chord and the key. By the way, if you set the key of the project um, 
it will follow the project key and the, the project uh, time signature as well. So you definitely want to, if you're going to be using these session players, you definitely want to set your project key and time signature before you start adding these session players. So I have, I have mine already set to the key of the song. All right, so this will be all right. Media input, toggle button. This, if you view space on this, you can just play in the chords with your MIDI keyboard instead of having to type them in and or select them through those different groups that we saw earlier. Preview button. And preview, if I hit this, you'll hear a preview of the chord. Yep, so that's pretty much it. Now, once you're done with this, if you want to come out of here, you can just hit escape. E music flat, chords, E music flat sign, E music flat sign, chord, E music flat sign, chord, E music flat sign, layout item. And if I view right, you see we have an E flat chord here. And if I hit control N, 61 bars, one beat, one tick. And control home, 53 bars, one beat, one tick. You see it made the chord the length for the entire region because I have a region at this um, playhead position. So it will make the chord the length of the, the region. Now you can shorten this chord. Let's say I only want this chord to be a bar long. If I go to say bar 50. Four. 54 bars, one beat, one tick. Yep, bar 54. And if I do command right bracket, it will trim the chord to end at the playhead. Um, so if I do control home. 53 bars, one beat, one tick. See the chord starts at 53, control end. 54 bars, one beat, one tick. And it ends at bar 54. So the nice thing about this is it's context aware. Once you kind of start VO left or right through the chord track, it's going to select either the group or the individual chord that voiceover is focused on and control home and end will tell you either where that chord group starts and end or where that chord starts and end. Similar to when you go into a track contents area and start to view right between the different regions, uh, control home and end will tell you where each of those regions start and end. So um, whatever voiceover is focused on is what it will do. Now, the nice thing about this is if you want to do a region selection, left and right arrows on their own will still do your region selection. So once you hit left or right arrows, it will switch the focus back to your regions. You can do control home and end to see where they start and end. But then once you veal left and right on the chord track, it'll switch your focus back to a chord track and you can use control home and end to see where a chord or a chord region or chord group starts and ends. All right. So let's move over to the bar. Recording music flat sign. Layout item. Make sure our playhead's at 54. Selection end. 53 bars one, 54 bars one beat one tick. All right, so our playhead's at 54. So now we're gonna press the number one again to add a chord at bar 54. And then what I'm gonna show you is if you press the tab key after you're done adding your chords, it will move you over one bar so you can put in the next chord. And then once you're done with that one, hit tab again, it'll move you over another bar and you can start putting in the next chord. So we got our E flat. The next chord we wanna do is a B flat with a D in the in the bass. So we get to use that feature next. So let's press number one. E music in scroll area, nine items, chord. And this brings up where we can type in a thing and you see it's putting me on an E flat. E music flat sign, content selected, chord. Again, edit. that's just the chord it's, def it's defaulting to because that's the key of the song and that's what most of these chord progressions start on. E music flat sign, root note, button. If we veal space on this root note thing. Menu, 18 items, check mark, E music flat sign. Now we want a B flat, right? So let's VO down, see if we can find a B flat here. Cap, e, cap F, F music sharp sign, G music flat sign, cap G, G music sharp sign, a music flat sign, cap A, a music sharp sign, B music flat sign. All right, there's a B flat. B music flat sign, selected. And now if I VO right. Chord types, grid. Chord types, if I interact with this. In chord types, grid major, selected, toggle button. You see some major by default, but you can choose. Minor, toggle button. Minor. Sus2, toggle button. Sus2, which is a suspended 2. Sus4, toggle button. Sus4, suspended 4. 5, toggle button. Uh, 5. Augmented, toggle button. And then augmented diminished, and button. diminished. All right, so come out of here. Out of chord types, extensions, grid. Extensions, if we interact with this. In extensions, grid, music flat sign 5, toggle button. So we can do flat 5. Music sharp sign 5, toggle button. Sharp 5. 6, toggle button. A 6. 7, toggle button. 7. Major 7, toggle button. Major 7. Music flat sign 9, toggle button. A flatted 9. 9, toggle button. A 9, so this is usually what you call like an add 9 chord. Music sharp sign 9, toggle button. A sharp nine. Eleven. Toggle button. Eleven. Music sharp sign eleven. Toggle sharp button. eleven. Music flat sign thirteen. Toggle flat button. Flat thirteen. Thirteen. Toggle button. And a thirteen. So those are all your extensions that you add there. Out of extension. None. Base note. Button. And none. Base note. So we want a D in the base of this B flat chord instead of the B flat. So I'm going to choose D from this base note pop up button. So I'm going to VO space. Menu. Cap C. C music sharp sign. D music flat sign. Cap D. 
and there we go d so if i be a space on this b music flat sign slash d you see it changed the chord name to b music flat sign slash d or b flat slash d because that's usually how you'd write that chord now uh if we want via right auto mixolydian scale button um we can change this now this is still in the e flat major scale menu, mixolydian major ionian so there we go via space on major closing menu major ionian scale and button. via right midi input toggle button if you view a space on that, we could play the chord in, but I already put it in. Preview button. And if I wanted to hear what this chord sounds like, I can view a space on preview. Now, I got everything I need for this chord, so I'm just going to hit tab, and the next chord is going to be a C minor. So let's hit tab. E music flat sign. And you see it's back to saying E flats because that's what it's starting each of these chords on. So let's go find the root note thing again. So via left. MIDI input, toggle, none, base, chord types, grid. E music flat sign root note button there we go so via space on this and this is a c minor so we want to select c as our root note menu a d music cap d d music c music cap c cap c there we go c. add a c chord types grid interact with the chord In types, types. Grid. augmented toggle button five toggle button sus four toggle button sus two toggle button minor toggle button there we go let's select C N minor out of chord types grid extensions grid and that's pretty much it for this chord it's a c minor we don't need to adjust anything else so if i press the uh, tab key, it will take me over to where I can do the next chord, which is going to be an A flat add nine. So I'm just going to hit tab. E music flat sign. Select it. And you see it puts me back on this E flat uh, major chord again. So this time we want an A flat. So let's be a left to the root note. Chord types, grid, E music flat sign, root note, button. And you see it basically leaves your focus wherever you were in this window, but it um if you view left you'll see that it definitely changed uh to the to a new chord here because it says e flat so we want an a flat add nine so we're going to select a flat as a root note menu 18 i cap e cap f f music g music cap g g music a music flat cap a a music sharp sign b music flat sign a music cap a a music flat sign there we go a flat a music flat sign selected and then if we view right chord types grid it does major by default so because this is an a flat add nine a major a flat major add nine. We don't need to do anything in there via right. Extensions, grid. Extensions, let's go find the ninth and turn that on. So let's interact. In extensions, grid 13, toggle button. Music flat sign 13, to music sharp sign 11, 11, toggle button. Music sharp sign nine, nine, toggle button. And it left us at the bottom of the thing since I went through all of them before. Um, so this is a nine. A music flat nine, toggle button. I'm gonna view a space. A music flat sign seven, nine. And you hear it said A flat seven, nine. That means it also turned the seventh on, right? So let's feel left. Music flat sign nine, major seven, toggle button. Seven, selected, toggle button. You see the seventh is also selected. So let's. A music flat sign add nine. And once I take that out, you hear it say A flat add nine because it's just a ninth and not a seventh nine, right? So Out of extensions. that's Great. pretty much it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how you can just type these chords in, right? So if I hit tab, it's going to take me to where I can put in a new chord, and that's going to be E flat. So these, this chord progression is going to repeat E flat, B flat slash D, uh, C minor, and A flat add nine. So if I hit tab, E music flat sign. You see it's on E flat. If I hit tab again, I can put in the next chord here, which is going to be B flat. But this time I'm just going to type it in. So I'm just going to do uppercase B, lowercase B for the flat sign slash and then D, because that's how you tell it you want a B flat with a D in the base. So I'll just do uppercase B, so shift B, Selection replace, cap B. lowercase B, B. and then B. Slash, slash, and then the letter uh, uppercase D as in delta. And if I hit return, B, B slash D. Selected. it makes that the chord. So I'm going to view it right. B music flat sign slash D. Select auto, mixolydian, scale, button. And MIDI input, toggle button, auto, mixolydian, cap D, delta, bass note, button. See, the bass note is set to D, so it did all that stuff for us. Auto, mixolydian, scale, button. It sets the scale to mixolydian. Menu, mixolydian, major, ionian. Let's set that back to major. Closing menu, major, ionian. All right, there we go. And now if I hit tab again, we want a C minor, so that's just going to be uppercase C, lowercase M. E music flat sign. So C, Selection replaced. Cap C M. M for minor. C M. Hit return. CM. Selected. And if I view right. MIDI input. Toggle button. Preview button. MIDI input. Toggle button. Base note button. Back. Extensions. Grid. Chord types. Grid. Chord type. Chord type. Minor. Selected. Toggle so button. Selects minor. Out of chord type. Cap C. And Charlie. it has a C there for us, right? As our base note. So now hit tab. E music flat sign. Selected. And this is the A flat add nine chord. So it's going to be uppercase A, lowercase B for the flat sign, space, the word add, A-D-D. -D. 
alpha delta delta space and a number nine. Right. So a Select and replace B. A A D D add nine. Hit return. A music flat sign at nine. And you'll see that core types grid extensions grid core type a music flat sign root note button root notes a flat core types grid. That should be major. In core types, grid major, selected, toggle button. Yep, major selected, stop and wrap. Core types, grid. Extensions, grid. Extensions, only the ninth should be selected. In extension, music sharp sign five, six, toggle button, seven, toggle button. So you see, it didn't select the seven this time because I just typed in A flat at nine. Major seven, toggle, music flat sign nine, selected, toggle button. But the nine is selected for us, so. Out of extensions, grid. There you go. It's basically put in all the chords that we wanted to put in here. Um, non base note auto lydian scale button so it has a scale as lydian menu lydian mixolydian major ionian let's switch that Closing back menu. to major major ionian and scale. that's pretty much it so if i hit escape a music flats tracks group and it put me back tracks on the track group let's interact in tracks tracks time ruler timeline in tracks time that. ruler selected button chord track contains chords and chord groups that set interact with the chord, in chord track. track contains Chords B music flat sign slash D C M A music flat sign at nine E music flat sign B music flat sign slash D C M A music flat sign at nine layout item Chords B music flat sign slash D C M A music flat sign at nine E music flat sign B music flat sign slash D C M A music flat sign at nine layout item All right, so all the chords I put in when I press tab got grouped together, right? But if I view left, chord E music flat sign layout item. That E flat is not a part of the group at all, but I want that E flat to be a part of the group, right? Because I just put that in on its own without um, tabbing, um, because I was kind of just demonstrating how the chord thing worked at first, right? Chords B music flat sign slash D, C M, A music flat sign at nine, E music flat sign, B music flat sign slash D, C M, A music flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ungroup these chords. Um, I think I mapped that to shift number two. So chord C M layout item chord B music flat sign slash D chord E music flat sign layout you item. See now I can get to all chord these music, chord C, chord chords music flat sign. individually, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the locators to do this because that's the best way I've found to do this so far because I can't seem to figure out another way to select these uh, chords. So chord C M layout item chord B music flat sign slash chord E music flat sign layout. So I'm going to use Control Home. Fifty three bars one beat one tick. That puts me at the start of that chord. And I'm going to put a uh, left locator there, command option left bracket. Left locator by playhead. And I'm going to go to the last chord here. Chord, 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 music flat sign add not. And control N. 62 bars, one beat, one tick. Puts me at the end of that last chord. But let me see where this chord starts. 60 bars, one beat, one tick. Yeah, so this goes from 60 62 bars, one beat, one to 62, tick. but the region ends at 61. So let's move the playhead back 61 here. Bars, one beat, one tick. And let's trim that to end at 61. 60 bars, one beat, one, 61 bars, one beat, one tick. There we go. And let's put our right locator there at 61. So command, option, right bracket. Set right locator by playhead. So now I got my left and right locator where the first chord is and the last chord is. So I want to select all the chords between the locators and I have that map to the number four, I believe. Let's see. Menu, 14, chord, create chord one, edit chord, elip, group chords, ungroup chord, cut command, copy command, paste command, delete. Select all chords three. Select all chords in cycle range four. Closing menu. Chord A music flat sign at nine. So that's gonna be the number four. So if I hit the number four and then the number two is my group command. So I hit the number two and now. Menu, 14 items. Menu, 14 items. Closing menu. Chord, chord Z music flat sign. Chord Z music flat sign. Chord Z music. Chord Z music flat sign. B music flat sign slash D. C M. A music flat sign at nine. E music flat sign. B music flat sign slash D. C M. A music flat sign at nine. Layout item. So you see, we got all of those chords grouped together now. Now, the other thing too is, let me play this. I'm going to go to the start bars, one beat, one of this. So that section repeats, right? So what I can do, I'm going to use my left and right arrows to get me back into region focus mode. So if I hit my left arrow, 61 bars, one, 53 bars, one beat, one tick. See, I have that region selected. Now I'm going to hit the left arrow again. 29 bars, one beat, one tick. Because the last region before this was 29 37 bars, one beat, one 37. Hit the right arrow. 61 bars, one, 53 bars, one so that's how you can make sure you are on your region uh, and you have your region focus instead of your tracks focus. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this region copy. and 61 bars, one beat, one tick. paste this right at bar 61. Paste. 
And I go back to bar 61. See, quarterly, that's not making sense. But now, I'm still in my chord track here. So just via left off, uh, uh, via left and then via right again to get the focus back onto the chord group instead of the region. So now when I do control home and end, it's telling me where the chord group starts. 53 bars, one beat, one tick. Control home. 61 bars, one beat, one tick. So what I can do is just copy this chord group. Copy. Make sure I'm at 60. 62, 61 bars, 61, one beat, one tick. And paste. paste. And now. 61 bars, one beat, 69 bars, one beat, 61 bars, one beat. I have a chord group from 61 to 69, the same place where the region is. So if I play from 61. You see that region that was just uh, that that didn't make sense quarterly before with the music is now just automatically following the chord track, and because now I have um, chords listed in the same area where there is um, a region. So if there's a region with nothing in the chord track, it's just gonna do some random stuff, but. Once you have a region at that spot, just put the playhead there and then you can start creating chords. Remember, you can use tab. Once you put a chord in that you're happy with, hit tab to go to the next bar and start putting in the next chord. If you want to type your chord, then just type in the chord and hit return. Once you hit return, it should make auto select all the appropriate things. And then if you want to verify, it, you can go look in the chord type and chord extensions and root note and, and bass note and all that stuff and verify that it made all the right selections. So if you get to a point where you know how to type in all the chords you want, you can move through this pretty quickly because you can hit the number one, get into the create chord dialogue and, you know, type in or select the options for the chord you want, hit the, t um, hit the tab key, it moves you over to the next bar and you're still in the chord uh, dialogue so you can start you just putting in the next chord and putting in the next chord and putting in the next chord etc etc you know uh, once again if you type the chord in just make sure you hit return once you type the chord in for it to take it um, the other thing to be aware of is that you can um, use control home and end to see where a chord or chord group starts you can ungroup and group your chords as I stated earlier I found the only way so far is to set locators around the start and end point where you want to group your chords and then use the select all chords uh, between locators and the and then the group command and that seems to work that's the only way i found to do it so far um, because even though when we veal left or right it does seem to select or focus on the chords if you try to uh do veal command return or any of those other tricks that we can use to select regions or select notes in the event list doesn't seem to work in the core track. The only way I found to do it is with key commands. Uh, if I even if I try to use a context menu with field shift M, uh, that doesn't seem to work either. Backspace key will delete the chord or chord group that you're on. So that's how you can delete a chord. And if you want to edit a chord, once you navigate to that chord and uh, it would be a left or right you can hit the edit chord key command. In this case, I mapped that to shift one. So once again, one creates chords, shift one edits chords, two groups chords, shift two ungroups chords. Three will select all the chords you have and four will select all the chords in cycle range or between the locators. And that's pretty much it for this one. Uh, you can copy and paste with command C and command V and delete a chord or chord group with the backspace key. You can also move chords the same way you move regions by moving the playhead to a position and hit the semicolon to move the chord to that place. If you want to shorten the length of a chord, you can put the playhead where you want and use command right bracket to set the end of the chord to wherever the playhead is. Edit in regions, edit in events in the event list, editing chords, a lot of the same key commands are used. So that's why it pays to get up to speed with the different key commands for a lot of these editing functions because it will speed up your workflow and logic being familiar with all of them. I'm definitely gonna be playing around with the chord track more and I'm probably gonna do something where I just go through and build out the chord track for an entire track. And a lot of that will be in 
the members area. So if you want to follow along with this core journey and get all the bonus content and tutorials, then definitely consider signing up and becoming a channel member. Hit the join button if you're watching this on YouTube. Otherwise, visit logic.band slash member to become a member. And remember, once you build out your chord progression, you still want to go into the session editor, the session player editor, and mess with the parameters in there to fine tune uh, what is playing um, in this song as well. So case in point, there's a part in the song where the guitar is doing um, some more leady stuff. So I just have the left hand of the chord being played in that section. So I went into the session player and turned off the right hand for that section. There's plenty of stuff you can mess with in there. So check that out as well. But this is an overview of the chord track for now. And there'll be lots more coming uh, now that the global tracks are more accessible. I'm going to be exploring that in future tutorials on the channel and exploring the session players as well and going through some of the parameters for the session players as well in future tutorials. So stay tuned. Thank you for checking out this tutorial. Hope you found that useful and helpful. If you got any tips you'd love to share with the community, please feel free to leave those in the comments below. Remember to like, share, and subscribe both to the YouTube channel and to the email list found at logic.band. That way you can get a free getting started with logic course and I can let you know when the logic keyboard ninja key commands have been updated and keep you in the loop on everything going on at logic.band. Want to go deeper on this topic or anything relating to macOS, voiceover, logic, or garage man? Then book yourself some one-on-one -on -one training by visiting logic.band slash training. Want to support us? Then visit logic.band slash support where you can make a one-time or ongoing donation. You can also join the band by visiting logic.band slash member or just hit the join button if you're watching this on YouTube and you'll get bonus tutorials at Q&A with me and more. Links to everything plus a blog post with supplemental information for this tutorial is in the description and as always happy recording.